Ezekiel opens his eyes, and suddenly he's standing on a ridge on the edge of a valley. And he squints and he looks down and he realizes that what he sees in the valley are bones. And he looks closer and the skeletons are jumbled together in terrible positions and Ezekiel grimaces to consider the deaths that they died. The bones are dry, desiccated, picked clean by the birds. Here and there, tattered cloth sticks around the bones and weapons stick up from the sand. It is all so dry and so dusty. And Ezekiel knows that this is a defeated army, massacred here, or maybe killed elsewhere and their bodies simply dumped here, a desecrated end. Mortal, can these bones live, queries the voice of God into Ezekiel's mind. And Ezekiel heaves a huge sigh, exhausted by his call as a prophet among a people living in exile, among a people who are grieving the loss of their land and their way of life, and who know that they're largely responsible for the calamity. They chose to be unfaithful to God and unfaithful to each other. They didn't follow the law, and so injustice just ran rampant through society. And worship was hollow, didn't go further than the temple gate. And so everybody followed their own flawed judgment, and the rulers made some seriously poor political alliances, and the invading army crushed them. And if you survived it, you were sent into exile. And this is where Ezekiel is with his people. He's not separate from it. His heartache is theirs. And he looks at the bones stretching the distance of the valley. And he says, Oh, Lord God, you know. And he says it with resignation, feeling as dry as the bones, the, the dust choking in his throat. Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you and will call flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. Hearing the command of God, Ezekiel, the prophet, opens his mouth to prophesy the words of God. And before he finishes the sentences, there is an unnerving rattling. And it starts softly, and it builds, and it grows louder and louder until it is a cacophonous echo through the valley. And Ezekiel watches in fascination and some horror as bones fly together. And sinews snake over bones, and skin wraps itself. And suddenly, he's not looking at a valley of bones, he's looking at a valley of lifeless men. And the voice of God came to Ezekiel, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God. Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. And Ezekiel prophesies the word of God, and suddenly a wind sweeps from every side of the valley into the valley, so strong it almost knocks him off the ridge. And he watches as the wind whips around the bodies of these men. And death reverses itself. These bodies gasp a first breath and a second breath. And they begin to stand up, and pretty soon Ezekiel looks down the valley and he sees a multitude of standing men, breathing and alive. Mortal, mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. I am going to open your graves. And bring you up from your graves, O my people, and bring you back to the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves, O my people. 
I will put my spirit within you and you shall live and I will place you on your own soil and then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act. And Ezekiel hears it and he looks out over the vast valley of men and he feels the kind of chill he's felt before when he encounters the creative life generating power of the divine. And he knows deep in his own bones that this is the message his people need. They are so hopeless. They are so lifeless. They feel so abandoned. But God longs to breathe God's breath into them, to revive them, to restore them, to bring them back to a true life. And Ezekiel knows he is the prophet he has stood on the ridge, he has felt the power of God, and he alone can take the message back. He knows that what God calls him to do, he will do. And he knows in his bones he will do it because he loves his beloved people and he wants to see them live again. Blink once and suddenly you're standing on a ridge, on the edge of a valley. And you squint and you look down the valley and you realize what you are seeing are bones. Skeletons in all kind of array. Some of them are seated with their head in their hands, posture of despair and depression and anxiety. Others are reaching, grasping both hands out for something. Maybe peace, maybe power, maybe prosperity, maybe hope. And other bones, they look so frail. They've been easily torn apart, victims of despair, victims of deprivation, victims of hunger. And other skeletons lie in awkward poses, and you know that there was abuse, that there was violence. And so many of the bones leave no clues, but they're so dry. They've been picked bare. And around the bones peek out the tatters of failed government policies, and there flutters the fabric of torn social cohesion. And technology and weapons stick up from the sand, powerless to save anybody. Mortal. Can these bones live? Queries the voice of God to your mind. And you heave a deep breath, feeling exhausted because you too know what it's like to live in the world. You're not distant from the depression or the anxiety or the pressure or the pain. You too have perhaps suffered abuse or violence or want, tried to find warmth among people and found nothing but a chill. You too have tried to keep up and build an inner life and an outer life that are somewhat successful or meet someone's demands. The power of technology, the phone, the computer. And you stare down the valley of dry bones. Oh Lord, you know. You say resignedly, feeling as dry maybe as the bones and the dust catches in your throat. Prophesy to those bones and say to them, O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live. And you shall know that I am the Lord. Hearing this reverberate in your body, you realize you are the prophet. And as you open your mouth to speak the word God has given you, before you finish the sentences, there's an unnerving rattling. And it's soft at first, but it grows and it builds. It builds a cacophonous racket echoing through the valley. And you watch in fascination and some horror as bones come together and sinews snake over bones and skin wraps itself over muscle. And pretty soon, you're not looking at bones anymore, you're looking at a valley of lifeless people. Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal. Say to the breath, thus says the Lord, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these, 
that they may live. And you speak the word of God and the wind rushes in every corner into the valley, so strong it almost knocks you off the ridge. And you watch as it whips up the sand and wraps around the bodies. And as death reverses itself, and these bodies take their first gasp of breath and their second. And pretty soon you're looking at a multitude of living, breathing people. Mortal, these bones are the whole of your people. Many are dying and dry. Many feel cut off completely. I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, and I will bring you to truest life. And you stare at the breathing bodies in the valley, and you realize with a chill that once again you have encountered the creative, life-generating power of God, the God into whom you were baptized. The God who sent his spirit among you. The God who has spoken hope and has brought you to truest life. And you realize that the, the, the divine desire is for the breath of God to fill every valley and every person that is. And you realize that God invites the prophets and his own people to speak the word of truth. Divine initiative paired with human action, and the breath comes, and people find life. And you realize that this is what your people need, the hope and the possibility and the promise and the mercy and the forgiveness and grace that the power of God can breathe and bring life. Do you know in your bones that it is the call of God for you to go and stand on the ridge and enter the valley and speak breath because God has called you to it and God has promised it and will you do it for all your beloved people?